What is up YouTube? Live via satellite here and today we're talking Kingdom. In particular guys, today we're going to be discussing why I believe that even today, Mobu is unable to defeat Shohikin in a duel. But before we get into that guys, if you're new here, click the subscribe button because we talk a lot about Kingdom and if you like the video, it really helps out if you like the video. Alright, so getting back to the topic, yes, that's right, I said it. I didn't stutter. The same Mobu who has defeated Kanme. The same Mobu who is revered as one of the strongest men in all of China. The same Mobu who, if the six great generals were compared to the Avengers, would obviously be the Hulk. Yes, that same towering, muscles on top of muscles, mace wielding general, I wholeheartedly believe cannot defeat Shoei-kun in a straight up mano a mano duel. And at this point, some of you may probably think I'm crazy and not too long ago, I wouldn't have even made these statements. But because of the more recent developments in Kingdom, it actually shed some light, at least to me, on some of the more mysterious things we've seen in the past. And one of those things, in particular, at least relating to this video, has to do with what Saitaku said during the introduction of the Four Pillars of Ryo Fui. And this whole issue stems all the way back to Chapter 99, when Mobu was talking about bringing back the Sixth Great General system. And Saitaku basically questions him, wondering why he wants to bring that back. And Mobu says, so that he can prove that he's the strongest in all of China. But what Saitaku says next has always been very intriguing to me. When he kind of almost laughs off what Mobu says, and he says, strongest in China, you say? But that is quite odd. Isn't there already someone stronger than you right here? Isn't that right, Shoei-kun? And you know, the funny thing here is Shoei-kun tries to play it off, saying that Saitaku goes too far with his jokes and all. But think about this. Mobu sat there and said absolutely nothing. He didn't defend himself like one bit, but as soon as Oki's brought up, he has a whole lot to say, right? And of course the reason could be because him and Shoei-kun are kind of close, but I honestly think it has more to do with the fact that there was some truth behind Saitaku's words. And I believe I discovered the reason why Mobu to this day is still unable to defeat Shoei-kun. And interestingly enough, we start getting our first hints when Mobu encounters Manu. Manu finds his curiosity piqued by Mobu and then says something very interesting. As he's watching Mobu fight, he says, you carry a heavy burden on your shoulders. What it is, I do not know, but that is how you defeated Kanme, someone stronger than yourself. So apparently, whatever Mobu's burden is, is something that gives him strength. And this is really explained perfectly in the duel between Hoken and Oki. At first during this duel, neither one of them is really showing their true strength and it looks like an evenly matched duel. Hoken even tells Oki that he doesn't need to hold back and that he should be capable of much more than this. And after pushing Oki back a bit, we even see Hoken trying to get under Oki's skin by bringing up Kyo to see if that motivates him a bit. But what's strange here that I don't think many people ever take notice of is that it's almost like Oki can like flip a switch. After slicing Hoken, he tells him, there's no need for you to worry, Hoken. I am the same as you. The wounds upon my heart have also yet to heal. And then the very next scene we see Oki in, we see Shin even saying, what's going on? General Oki isn't moving at all. And it's almost like he's focusing. And then we see him like have a flashback to Kyo. And then we literally see Oki go Super Saiyan. And everyone on the battlefield is shocked. They can literally feel the energy coming off of him. And we can tell that this is a totally different form that Oki has entered into because even Hoken says, yes, this is it. This is what he came to fight. This is what defeated him nine years ago. But when Hoken begins to fight Oki, also unleashing his peak strength, he quickly begins to realize that he's still no match for him and he doesn't understand where Oki pulls all this strength from. And Oki seeing this says to Hoken, you seem to be at a loss, Hoken. To be a general is to be burdened. Ever since the tender age of 13, I have toured countless battlefields across the lands. I have lost tens of thousands of comrades and buried hundreds of thousands of foes. The hopes and wishes which faded together with the spark of life of all those lives, all of that now dwells heavily upon these two shoulders. Naturally, Kyo's will is with me too. 
A hermit like you who spends his life hiding in the mountains all alone probably has no idea of what this entails. And this is so key because not only is this chapter called Source of Strength, but we also see just like Manu, Oki brings up the word burden. So this makes it pretty clear to me that a general strength comes from his burden. We see this concept enforced even when Shin's taken on Gyun. After Gyun pretty much tells Shin that he is undeserving of Oki's glaive, Shin directly after thinking about Oki is able to overpower Gyun when he wasn't able to before. And Gyun's comments after this encounter are pretty interesting because he says, it would appear that you do indeed have the right to carry that glaive, Shin saying, isn't that obvious? And then Gyun, hardly so. It is not so simple a matter as you think. After all, it is not only a question of your martial prowess. Rather, the important question is whether or not you have even the slightest understanding of the strength of a man. So obviously here, we're seeing Shin being able to tap into that power, right? Because his burden is that he's the man who not only inherited Oki's glaive, but also his will. But I think here what Giyun is suggesting is that Shin is tapping into it, but kind of unknowingly. And that point that Giyun makes about it not all being about martial prowess ties perfectly into what Manu was saying about Mobu when he was able to defeat Kame who was stronger than him. The fact that martial prowess isn't everything is even more cemented by Hogan himself. When during his fight with Oki, he says, my speed is faster than his, and my strength greater too. Even when it comes to technique, he cannot even be compared to me. Yet, why is it that I cannot cut him down? And the answer here is pretty clear. It's that Oki's burden is giving him the strength to be able to defeat Hoken, right? Even though Oki is lesser than Hoken in all those categories, this one thing is something that allows Oki to put himself on a level that Hoken can't reach. Now how all this ties back into Mobu is that when Mobu and Manu were fighting, Manu says something very, very interesting. He tells Mobu, I still don't know what burden you carry. If it's a dead person's legacy, it will make you forever more powerful. However, if your burden comes from the living, there's a single thing you must be ready for, that you may be betrayed by it. So it's here where it's actually implied that Mobu's burden is actually Shoikun. And unlike the burdens that Oki carries with Kyo and Shin carries with Oki, those people are already gone, so the power that they can tap into is permanent. Whereas with Mobu, Shoikun is still alive. So whatever strength Mobu gains by Shoikun being his burden isn't something that's going to always be guaranteed, especially as Manu says, if it were to betray him. Now at this point, it should be pretty easy to figure out why I believe that Mobu cannot defeat Shoikun in a duel. And that is because the thing that gives Mobu his freakish strength is the fact that Shoikun is his burden. So if the two of them were to ever face off, Mobu would not have that strength to pull from. Which is why I think that not only would Mobu take an L to Shoikun like right now where they're currently at, I also believe that Saitaku actually knew what he was talking about and Mobu had already probably taken a few L's to Shohiken in the past. But the good news is with Mobu, this particular weakness only pertains to Shohiken. So yeah, he's still pretty badass. And I mean, even Superman had his kryptonite, right? But honestly, man, I don't even think these two having a duel is the most important thing. It's a fun video to make because I always wondered why Saitaku thought what he thought. But really, the more interesting thing I want to know is, why in the world does Mobu see Shohiken as a burden? But anyway guys, that about does it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Do you guys think that Shoikin can beat Mobu one on one? Or am I out here on an island all by myself? Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to share, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.